Welcome to Deer Park, a southeast Texas city of 32,000 people that began to flourish in the 1940s. It's also dubbed as the birthplace of Texas. Unfortunately, it's also known for a big ethylene explosion at the Shell Chemical Plant in 1997. But another thing Deer Park is known for is baseball. In the last 10 years, Deer Park High School baseball has won 24 plus games twice in 2014 and 2018. Then they have 30 plus wins in four different occasions while winning 37 in 2016 while being ranked the number two team in the state and number 26 in all of America. And then 35 wins again in 2017 while hoisting the Texas 6A state championship trophy. Deer Park is also the hometown of five-time World Series winner Andy Pettit. About 20 years ago, a few die-hard baseball fanatics who have made a great living for themselves with successful refineries in the area had a great idea of sharing Deer Park's love for baseball with the rest of the country. So they founded Deer Park University. And the school will have two sports, football, because well, duh, it's Texas, and then of course baseball being the other. Now the football program is terrible, but the baseball team over time took over the NAIA, Division Three, and Division Two baseball scene. Now they have officially been invited to join the ranks of Division One, but with one catch. The team had to disband for a couple of seasons just because they had to get a couple different things in line for the move. They had to get a lot of things up the code to be ready to be called a D1 school. You know how the NCAA is. So now preparing for their first year of D1 competition and no scholarships for the first year, the Deer Park University baseball team has put together what they could, getting some of the leftover talent of players that didn't quite get the D1 offers that they were looking for. This is their journey. Their road to Omaha, a chance to play for a College World Series. Welcome to the brand new series on the channel, the NCAA MVP 07 Deer Park University Coyotes. Now, two months ago, I asked you guys in a poll and a thousand of you guys voted, which state should this new MVP 07 team be from? And Texas won by a landslide. So, you know, um, I did a little research found, you know, a, a smaller city in Texas that has some history to it. And I came across Deer Park University. You know what I mean? It's uh, dubbed the birthplace of Texas. Thought that was pretty cool. And I thought that would be a nice little storyline to throw in for the squad as we embark on this new journey. Now, first things first, before we get into anything else, let's go ahead and meet the squad. Now, of course, you know what I mean? I posted another post on the community tab asking you guys to submit your um, subscriber players. And we got over 430 entries. So thank you guys for being interested in being a part of this series. Now, of course, you guys already know sponsors get first dibs on players. So, you know, all my sponsors that submitted players are going to be the starters. But to keep this a little different, I'm not going to recruit any players the first year because I want you guys to play at least two seasons before we start bringing in other players. I will only bring in people mainly to the program when, um, you know what I'm saying, when seniors are leaving or when people leave early for the draft or people choose to transfer and or leave school. You know what I mean? We could pick up some walk-ons, but, you know, we're going to wait a couple seasons before we start to recruit players because I want you guys who have, who initially made the team to get chances to play as much as possible. Our, our catchers are going to be Thomas Duff and Casey Baxter. Our lone first baseman is Jason Harris. Our two second baseman, Manny Yarbrough and Jackson Mirage. Third baseman, Felipe Uio, Brian Simmons. And then at short, we got Dustin Kraft and Shane Bauer. And left, we got Jacob Matley. Also, we have Steve Swagger. Center field, we got Kelton Schott and Trey Porter. Right field, we got Kenny Davison uh, and Jack Duddy. Starting pitchers, K Gage Kasky, JT Adams, and Trey Warfield. In relief, we got Eli Porter, Alex Kuntz, Lewis Reese, Lane Booker, Tyrone Patterson, and Tommy Montalongo. Now, you know, he's missing the O in his name, but that's because I had to get you know what I mean? I had to fit everything in while adding the YT to the end of his name. And a lot of you guys ask why I have the YTs at the end of the name. It's not more so for me to know that they're uh, subscriber recruits, you know. It's for us to easily identify them when we go through stats and try to find our players to see what they're doing compared to other players on the list. It's just an easy identifier for us to see. That's our player. We don't have to scroll down all crazy and look super hard. We see the YT and we know that's us. 
So the Baton Order vs. Riding is going to be uh, Trey Porter, Manny Yarbro, Jack Duddy, Jason Harris, Steve Swagger, Kenny Davison, Casey Baxter, Felipe Uvio, and Shane Bauer. And against lefties is going to be Casey Baxter, Shane Bauer, Jack Duddy, Jason Harris, Kenny Davison, Kelton Shaw, Jacob Malley, Felipe Uvio, and Jackson Mirage. Now the one, th now the one thing I noticed with this lineups between lefties and righties, a lot of you guys pick different strengths. So, you know, uh, some of you guys want to be better against righties. Some of you guys want to be better against lefties. So it, it, for this uh, for this uh, situation, for the most part, there's going to be multiple starters at each position for different situations. I mean, there may be more right-hand pitchers than left-hand pitchers, but for the most part, everybody will be able to get some burn. And then energy does fluctuate and go up and down throughout the season. So people will need days off, and their backups will get chances to come in and fill that hole and that void. And if people aren't playing well, we'll make uh, substitutions as well. You guys know I do everything as fair as possible trying to get people in these games. All right, so you see in the right-hand corner, our team is D pitching, D batting, C plus fielding, A speed. A lot of you guys want to speed to be a part of you guys strengths so we have a fast team even though we may not hit the ball that well and then right below that you guys see coach levels are all at zeros for pitching hitting fielding and, and, and running so what we got to do to get to level one in all of those categories for pitching we need to have at least one pitcher with at least eight wins for level one running we need to have one player for you know what i mean at least third team all conference for, for fielding, we need to have get at least 25 wins as a squad. And then for hitting, we need to hit at least 50 home runs, you know, total. Uh, when it's, it's not by season. This is just, you know, throughout the program history. Not sure how long that's going to take to for us to get there, but, you know what I mean, we're going to try our hardest. Take a look at the top 25 for this first season. Oregon State, North Carolina, Clemson, Georgia Tech, Georgia, Cal, Fullerton, Cal State Fullerton, Miami, Rice, Virginia, Kentucky, South Carolina, Vandy, Texas, Florida State, Oklahoma, Oklahoma State, Alabama, NC State, Nebraska, Ole Miss, Tennessee, Arizona, Arkansas, Houston, and Baylor. And then uh, you guys probably have seen already the conference we are in. We are in the Mountain West Conference. We chose to go to the Mountain West Conference because I didn't want to displace any team in the Big 12 because, you know what I mean, when you create teams on this game, you cannot – just uh, add them like a team builder. You, you, I mean, just like team builder, you have to replace that team. You overtake their roster. But what I did, you know, I, I doctored things around, made players worse than what they were, traded some players. You could trade players in this game just so we can get the lower level players. That way we can build ourselves up and get to that College World Series level. So here in the Mountain West, TCU, BYU, UNLV, San Diego State, us, Utah, Air Force, and TCU being here in the Mountain West, it was the deciding factor, hey, they could use another Texas team. I don't remember what team we replaced, but you know what I'm saying? They weren't that great. Also, you see, we are ranked 124th in the nation. Probably only only going to get worse, to be quite honest with you. We're a, we're a, we're not even a full one star prestige school. That's another good thing about this game that you can get half stars prestige. So you know, to get up to that six star prestige is going to really really take some work. I want this series to last a little bit longer than what Seton Hall did. You know, what I mean, I was trying to win as fast as possible with Seton Hall, but with this, I want to take our time, really t really slowly build this program into a national power. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Evergreen Park, our home field, our home opener here this season, taking on the Nevada Wolfpack. You know what I'm saying? Trey Warfield on the mound. He's got the eye black trying to be a little bit scary to these hitters, man. Now, let's see if he can come out here and have a quality start and a good outing. All right. Trey taking on Wooders. First batter of the game. First pitch is a two-seamer in for a strike. Let's go. Want to attack these hitters' uh, cold zones, of course. Cause a pop-up, cause a ground ball, even get a strikeout. We go up top with the fastball. He cannot catch up. Curveball action. Ah, sits back on it. Ground ball to Yarbrough. He tosses it over to Harrison. We got one dead. And then, you know, you see we got behind the plate of Trey Warfield on the mound. That's a ground ball to Bauer. Can he make the play backhand across the diamond? We got two dead, ladies and gentlemen. Let's get it. 2-1 inside. We get the fly ball we need it, and we get out of this inning. One, two, three. Trey Warfield holding it down. All right, so we're going up against West Home, the right hand ace here for Nevada. Trying to come out here. You know, we want to get to him early and often. Trey Porter leading this off. He has good contact, also good speed. Fastball inside. We're late on it. Lazy pop up. One, one thing you guys used to always say to me about Seton Hall, I swung at the first pitch too much, but I just try to be aggressive, man. I try to attack the pitcher. We try to get on base as quickly as possible. Now we got Manny Yarbrough up the bat here. Ah, just out in front of an off-speed pitch there. 
Y'all bro also has good speed at 92. Uh, way to hold up on that slurve. Slurve high. All right, fellas. Let's get in a good hitter's count and get a base knock. Good take there. We did not go, Blue. Come on. No one us. Thank you. We weren't even close. I don't know what we were thinking about. Good hitter's count here. Ah, y'all bro grounds out to the shortstop. He tosses it across the diamond. Bad throw. But the first baseman is able to adjust to make the play. Now we got Jack Duddy coming up here in the three hole. Here we go. He's one of our power hitters batting in the third slot. Ah, out in front of the circle change there. High fastball. Probably had no business swinging at it. That is strike number two. We were on it. Just too high out of the strike zone. There's the fastball. We get our first base knock in D1 history. Our three hole hitter, Jack Duddy up the middle. Let's go. Now cleanup man and power extraordinaire Jason Harris coming up the bat. Let's see what he can do. Change up. We leave that up high. Easy work. All right, two count. Jason Harris is in the, you know what I mean, where he wants to be. He gets the fastball, but is out of the strike zone, unable to hold up his swing, and that's going to be the first strike of the AB. Uh, now we swing at a bad sinker low. Just like that, the pitcher is back even. All right, choke and poke here, choke and poke. Another ball up the middle, snagged by home, and he tosses it over to first, and that's going to do it for us here in the first inning. We get the first base hit of the ball game. All right, boys, we need we need a ground ball here. Curveball inside, beautiful pitch. Throws him up a little bit. All right, here we go. Change up away. Got him way out in front. Now we are where we want to be, Trey. We can throw a waste pitch. We do not need to go right at him. All right, two-seamer inside. Ball up the middle is smoke. Trey trying to get it in, looking to hit the cut. We do hold the hitter at first, so the double play is still in order. That wasn't a bad pitch there, man, but, you know, they're not swinging that pitches out of the zone. Another two-seamer broke up the middle here, and they are on the board 2 nothing for Nevada. All right, Trey, settle in and settle down. We need a ground ball. That is not it. That pitch was left up too high, but it's a tailor-made double play. Y'all Bauer to y'all Burrow, and we get out of this inning, only giving up two. It could have got a lot uglier than that, but we are in good. We, You know what I mean? We're good money. All right, Trey, our leadoff man, Trey Porter, up the bat here. Let's see if he can get on. All right, we're going to leave that slurve up top. There we go. We got to settle down and settle in. You know what I mean? Be smart here. We don't need to force anything. We don't need to just come up here free swinging. We need to work the count. Slurve, low. There we go. Oh, it's a slider this time, low. Good eye. This guy has a couple different uh, off-speed pitches. Now we're ahead in the count where we want to be. All right, can we work a walk? Yes, sir, we do. Our leadoff man, Trey Porter, is on with two dead. He has wheels. Ball in the gap can score him. Many y'all, bro. We need you, kid. Let's go. All right, we steal. That's a beautiful steal. Trey Porter's in the second. Perfect pitch is still on off-speed pitch inside. Now here's y'all, bro, 1-1 one, one count. Fastball, we hit it up the box. We got to send Trey Porter. It's going to take a perfect throw. Here comes the throw. It's offline, and we get our first run of the ball game quick. Now we got Steve Swagger up the bat here in the bottom of the fourth. He gets a fastball high. He hits that one in the gap. Swagger, get on your horse. Give me extra bases. Automatic two. We're looking to get three. Can we get there? It's going to take some perfect throws. Swagger rounds third. Down, and he is out by a mile. The outfielder didn't even hit the cutoff man, and we take away a base runner in extra bases being greedy, and that's going to hurt. Curveball hit on the ground to Bauer. He makes the play. One dead. Let's go. All right, come on, Trey. I want you to get out of the fifth. I want you to at least get out the fifth. That's a fly ball swagger on his horse. Can of corn. Oh, my goodness. He made that look a little more difficult than what it had to. All right, one more batter here, Warfield. One more batter and get me out of this inning. Ground ball to y'all, bro. He bobbles it a little bit, but he's at second, so he has all day. And we go three up, three down, and we're out of this inning. All right, boys, a little bit of a pickle here. Two dead. Runners on first and second, but we have the lefty-lefty matchup. Let's see if Koons can get us out of this. Ground ball to y'all, bro. And that's exactly what we needed. Let's go hit, fellas. All right, Bauer, 0-1 count. Ah, we got to let that float. We got to let that float, man. All right, top of the order, Trey Porter, one for two, two stolen bases, a run scored, and a walk. Let's see what he can do here, man. Oh, yeah. Oh, that was a good pitch to attack, Trey. Good piece of hitting there, man. We got the one we needed and won it. All right, man, let's see if we can get us, get, get us going here with two outs. Ah, you missed the fastball, man. All right, top nine. 
Let's try to see if we can keep these dudes off of the scoreboard. We don't need any insurance runs. Bauer lays out, unable to get to the ball. All right, and they got their leadoff man on. All right, we're going to go to the bullpen. We're going to bring in Tyrone Patterson here. A little bit of a fresher arm, still a lefty. So we're still going to get that uh, that advantage here. They're trying to bunt him over. Oh, you had him at two. He just wanted to throw the ball. Can't preload the, the throws like you do on the show. And Chase A. Arums, Air Armis, excuse me, their, uh, their closer is warming up here. Come on, Patterson. Just make some good pitches. That's a good one. That's a fly ball. Swagger is under it. All right. Here we go. Oh, no. He's tagging. I didn't expect to see him tag the third from left. And just like that, they have a runner 90 feet away with Seth Holler up the bat. He's one for three with an RBI already here today. This is where we need you, Tyrone. This is where we need you, Tyrone. Bauer lays out. Can he make the throw? He stops it from getting the outfield. But... They get the RBI nonetheless. That hurts. All right, so they do go to Armis, the closer. You know what I mean? Take one. We're down two runs. That was that. He has a funky windup. It's so real over the top. That curveball was up high, but you know, you know, unwritten rule. When you're down, take first pitch. You gotta take take first pitch strike. Boom. That was a beautifully dotted pitch. Beautifully dotted pitch. Now we're ready, Duddy. We're ready, Duddy. Let's get it. Oh, get up the box. Let's go, Duddy. I believe that's his third hit of the ball game here today, man. I'm loving it. He gets the fastball. That one gets through the hole. I want to want to try out the right fielder's arm for three, but you know what I mean. Two on, nobody out. Let's go. That was it. That was it. That was a rope too. Steve Swagger, two for three on the day. Let's see what he can do here, man. Another power guy. Oh, I'm sorry. I couldn't take that first pitch strike there that time. Everybody back, man. Swagger, that was a good pitch to swing at. That was looks like we might have been just out in front of it. Man, oh, man. Come on, Davidson. Take first pitch strike. All right. We get a high change up. Definitely wouldn't have waited back on that, but it was in our hot zone. Ah, leave that nastiness. That is not a good pitch to swing at. Not a good pitch to swing at at, at, at all. Tough with two here. Way to protect. We got to protect. Ooh, that was a nasty pitch. That was a nasty pitch. Nasty, nasty pitch. We get a fastball. It gets through. We got to try him. We got to try him. Damn. Oh, we don't have to. Throw us offline and we get one run back. We're going to bring in Dylan Kraft off the bench to, to pitch it here. We're going to bring you in 75 power. You can hit the ball into the gap somewhere. First pitch strike we're taking still. All right. Okay, high curveball. He's throwing a lot of high breaking pitches. One dead here. Ball, ball, a single score is one, baby. Let's go, Dylan. Good eye there. Good eye. My fault. I keep calling him Dylan Craft. It's definitely Dustin Craft. My my apologies, fam. Get the fastball. We can't let him turn two. You got to take him out. Oh, my goodness. What an unfortunate way to end the game. We roll over on a fastball to the first baseman. Taylor made double play. We gave Nevada everything that they can handle. Ten hits for them. We had nine. They had an error. We lost by one run. Quick look at the box score. You know what I mean? For us, let's go down to our boys. One for three for Porter. One for four for y'all, bro, with the RBI. Three for four for Duddy. Harris, one for four. Swagger, one for, two for four. Davidson, one for four. Baxter and Kraft, 0 for four together. Uio and Bauer went 0 for three. Um, Pitching-wise, let's see who got the loss. Warfield gets the loss. He pitched five innings. Gave up two earned. Koontzen out of the bullpen gave up one earned. You know what I mean? Patterson got a hold, but you know what I mean? It, well, it wasn't a hold because we're losing, but, man, I, I feel like we played a very, very competitive game there. All right, boys, so we lost the first game, and then we drop the second game 7-3. And now we're moving on to the next series against a fellow 0-2 squad, University of Louisiana Raging Canes. You know what I mean? We're going to go ahead and uh, we got our boy Eli Porter on the mound starting for us here today. Gonna go ahead and get a little sim going. We go up one nothing early. They put up a three spot. We tied up. They go up. Then they put up three in the six, and that's gonna do it. We lose this game seven three. So we lose back to back game seven three. So you know our pitching, our pitching definitely needs some work here. We're back up to Trey Warfield, our ace on the mound. Let's see what he and this team could do. We give up one run in the first, get it back in the second, give up three. Then we put up two, give up three, get another one, put up one. They put up another, and we lose this game 8-5. to five. So we're scoring runs. We just can't stop these other teams from scoring runs. It looks like our pitcher, one of our pitchers, Lane Booker, is actually suspended for 10 games for poor academic performance. 
Boy, oh boy, does that hit us hard. All right, moving on to another series here against uh, St. Bonaventure. You know what I mean? We're still over here in, in, in this series. We're looking to get our first win. We give up two runs in the first inning. Our pitching definitely needs some work. We put up a sixth spot in the fourth, but we let them easily tie it back up. Can we put up runs? We're going into extras. 11th, 12th, 13th inning, 14th inning, and we lose in the bottom of the 14th, 7-6. to six. What a game, bro. Take a look at the box score of this one real quick. Duddy went two for four. Davidson went three for six. Two for six for Baxter. Four for six for Uyo. Two for three for Bauer. Bauer had four RBIs. But we were, you know, Bauer also hit a home run, but we were unable to get a W. A hit marathon. 16 hits for them. 15 hits for us. Now, here in this game, if this one is close, we are going to jump in to try to get the W. This is going to be the last game of the episode. We're up 3-0, 4-0, 5-0, and we actually finally get our first W of the season. You know what I mean? In game two against St. Bonaventure, we win that game 5-0. I should have looked at the box score nonetheless. But after the first six games of the season, let's come over here and take a look at the stats on the squad to see who is doing what, you know, Madley, he's only played one game, batting 500, but Duddy, a uh, pretty much everyday player, batting 360 with three RBIs. Baxter batting 346. Uyo batting 333. Y'all bro batting 304. That, that's it for the people batting in the 300s. Davidson, just, you know, not, not that far behind 300. Harris and Swagger and Bauer definitely need to step it up. Our leadoff man, Trey Porter, only batting 80, you know, 0 .083. You know, a, a horrible batting average. Home run leader Shane Bauer has the lone home run with one. He also leads us in RBIs with five. So next episode, we're definitely going to be looking to, to making a change. You know what I'm saying? In the batting order. Trey Porter, he's not getting the job done, bro. Um, You know, but he, he he's a good fielder. He has speed. We just might have to move him down in the lineup. Maybe put him in a nine spot or something like that. Not really sure how we're going to handle it. But hopefully you guys enjoyed this first episode of this new series. If you did, stop and smash that like button. Hit me up in the comment section below. Subscribe if you're new. It's your boy Uncle Sam's Reject, RKGames.com. I'm out of here. Peace. Letting you go, I was just letting you know I know the weather is cold, but you on your own I ain't no regular Joe, you should've left me alone I'm in the zone, I'm where the predators roam We at the Senate in Rome, and I'm on the throne This ain't no regular poem, this ain't that regular tone, no Do you follow me?